TensorFlow is the go-to tool for everything related to AI and machine learning. In a nutshell, it's a library for programming linear algebra and statistics developed by Google. The name TensorFlow comes from the word tensor, which is a multidimensional array used as the representation of the data that our AI models process. And the word flow represents the actions being taken on the data as it reverses the graph of operations. Originally, it was developed for Python, but it is now compatible with other languages such as C++ and JavaScript. A typical machine learning solution requires computations on a large amount of data. Since this data is in a multidimensional array format, the computation can become quite expensive, especially when running on a CPU. Fortunately, the computations performed on these tensors are very similar to those made in computer graphics. So TensorFlow can help us accelerate the training process by enabling computations on the GPU using NVIDIA CUDA. The usual workflow for a machine learning product is to train the model using data on the server. Once the model is trained and validated, we have a production-ready model that can meet the product requirements. But because this is still an expensive operation, when the client asks to use the model, the request is sent to the server, the calculations are made on the server, and then returned to the client. However, this can have a few technical and ethical issues. Nowadays, machine learning models make evaluations on all kinds of user data, which can lead to some serious data privacy issues. Not only that, but making an extra call to the server just to get the answer from the model can be expensive and make the user experience worse. Luckily, the JavaScript version of TensorFlow can run in the browser. And not only that, but it can also run the computations on the GPU by using WebGL, making the models faster. While it is not as powerful as running the model in a dedicated cluster of GPUs, it can save a lot of resources by reducing the number of server calls and protect the user's data by running the models directly on the user's device without exposing their data. Okay, so to use it in your browser, it's really quite simple. Create a simple HTML page and import TensorFlow with the URL of the Content Delivery Network, or CDN for short. A typical workflow for building AI solutions consists of three main steps. Getting and processing the data, creating and training the model, and testing and evaluating the model. Let's build our own solution using the MNIST dataset. This dataset consists of a large amount of images containing handwritten digits from 0 to 9, along with their respective labels. Our goal is to build an AI model that can classify these images into their respective digits. Let's start by creating one file for each of the three steps. A file for the data, another one for the model, and a last one for the testing. Lastly, create a main index file so we can build and run everything together. And don't forget to import it in the main HTML file. We are also going to import the TensorFlow Visor library, which has a lot of built-in tools that can help us visualize the data in a more intuitive way using graphs and images. So for the data, we can use the example on the TensorFlow website. I'll just leave the link in the description down below. But in a nutshell, the script creates a class with a load function and two others that return a batch of the training and the testing dataset. Both of these functions call the implementation of the batch defined in the last function. To obtain an unbiased evaluation of the model's performance on the current dataset, we can first shuffle the data to obtain a more evenly distributed set of values. Finally, we divide the entire dataset into a training set, which will be used to train the model, and a test set, which will be used to test the model after the training phase. This way, we ensure that we are testing the model with data that has not been trained on before, and therefore, we would have a more confidence in our results. We can see that on the load function. So first, we make the network requests to fetch the images. We then create random indices for the data with the sizes defined by us. And finally, we just divide both of the images and the labels into the training and testing datasets. We then create an auxiliary function to help us visualize the images by creating a container with the visor library and give it a name and the name of the tab. Next, get 20 examples from the data and create a canvas for each of the images. Fill it with the pixel data and append it to the container. From our main index.js file, create a run function and make it execute on content load. Import the MNIST data and the show examples function from our data.js file. Inside the run function, create the data object, load the data, and show the examples in the visor container. By going to the browser, we can now see 20 random examples from our dataset. For the model, let's create a function to build and return the TensorFlow model and define the variables such as the images width and height. 
and the number of channels, which will be one because we are dealing with grayscale images. If we were dealing with colored images, we would have three channels, one for each of the red, green, and blue values of each pixel. Finally, define the number of output classes, which will be 10, since we are trying to classify if the number is between 0 and 9. We are going to create a very simple neural network. So go ahead and create the model using the sequential function of TensorFlow. Add a first dense layer with the input shape of the images and simply give it five neurons represented here by the units. For the last layer, we will add another dense layer with the same number of neurons as the number of classes we want to predict. Since we are dealing with a multi-class classification problem, we are going to use the softmax activation function. But because the shape of the first layer is not compatible with the last layer, we will have to flatten the first layer by adding a new flatten layer to the model right after the first one. Now that we have our model, simply compile it with the AdamGrad optimizer and the categorical cross entropy loss function, since again, we are dealing with a multi-class classification problem. Finally, just return the model. For the training process, create a function that receives the model and the data. Let's visualize some of the metrics during the training process by creating a new container with TensorFlow Visor. Define the training parameters and format the data accordingly. Finally, return and call the fit function of the model and simply give it a low number of epochs so we don't have to wait as long for it to finish. To show the actual architecture of the model, simply create a function that calls the model summary from the TensorFlow Visor library. Going back to our main index.js file, import the functions we've just created, create the model, show its architecture, and finally begin the training process. In the browser, we can see that the model is currently training, and at the top we have the architecture, followed by the loss and accuracy graph of each batch. At the bottom, we also have the loss and accuracy graph for each of the epochs. Now, to test our model, we first must be able to make a prediction. So, go ahead and create a function for that. And inside the function, retrieve the next test batch, reshape it, and get the predictions by calling the predict method of the model. In the end, simply return both the predictions and the actual labels so we can compare them and check the model's performance. Let's keep it simple and view two different metrics, the accuracy for each label and the confusion matrix. For the accuracy, simply obtain the predictions by calling our function and create a new visor container with the per class accuracy metric. Now go ahead and create a class names variable so we can obtain the labels on the metrics. Finally, for the confusion matrix, do the same as the accuracy one, only this time use the confusion matrix metric from the visor library. Call both functions in the main logic file, reload the page, and now we can see the accuracy for each of the classes in our test set and the respective confusion matrix. You can now build your very own robot army in the browser and integrate machine learning solutions more easily into your front-end project, giving you the ability to tackle more interesting use cases. I hope you guys liked it, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers!